Hi everyone, Ladislas Morris from TheWanderingInvestor.com here. I'm in Kyiv in Ukraine. I'm here for about 10 days looking at real estate, looking at investments, meeting with agents, lawyers, fund managers. And today we're meeting with John. So he's Canadian and he manages a real estate fund. And he has an office that is yielding him almost 19%. So I can't really think of many markets in the world that can give such yields. So I asked him if we could go and actually see the place and also the exact breakdown in terms of the numbers and how he manages to get that 19%. So we're in the center of Kyiv in an area called Pichersk. It's really prime. There's the metro nearby. There's a lot of new buildings, historical buildings walking to the core core center is maybe a 10 minute walk away from here but this is an area with a lot of residential space and office space as well it's definitely one of the best areas in in Kiev. so i'm expecting nice views because the office we're going to visit is on the top floor of this building all right let's go Well, John, how are you? Yeah, great, thanks. Beautiful day today, actually. We have the sun coming in through the windows. Yes, so I'm really excited about this place. One, I like the neighborhood. Mm. Two, I saw the building. I was like, oh, okay, this building, it doesn't look that fantastic, but it's got like solid bones. So sure, let's go, let's go see it. Right. And then we took the elevator to the, to the top floor. 20th, yes. 20th floor. The view is amazing. We're going to have a look at it. But I think what's really interesting and what people want to hear is before we do a tour of the of the actual property is what what are the numbers? So right. how much did you pay for this property per right. square meter? Uh, the size, the cost per square meter of the renovation, right. and then the rental yield. Okay, so there's a couple things to consider here. Uh, we purchased this for approximately $850 per square meter. And I mean, there's a, let's run through the numbers first and then perhaps we can go through I'll, the. I'll, I'll stop right here. Generally in life, if you can buy prime real estate in a capital city for less than $1,000 a square meter, you're doing very well. And we're not talking of some small, obscure capital city in, in a country of 300,000 people. Kiev is what, like four million people, five million people. Nowadays, no one really yes. knows four or five million people. No one really knows exactly because of the people who've moved from the east. Immigration. So it's less than a thousand dollars in a prime area per square meter for a penthouse in the top three floors of a <laughs> practically brand new building. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah okay. So absolutely. Eight fifty per square meter, and then how much did you pay for the renovation? Okay, so we're all in for this place for about $1,250 per square meter. Um, this includes a, a lot of extra, of other costs and improvements to, first of all, we've included, uh, increased the number of square meters here. We've built an outside terrace. We've uh, also made uh, drastic changes to make the, the property more useful. Um, changing where the entry door is, rezoning. This is a residential apartment. It's completely legal in, in Kiev to use a residential apartment for office space. So we've rezoned this into two residential apartments for resale purposes. And we've done the full uh, renovation, as you can see, as office. So we purchased for 850 a meter, and we're all in for 1250 a meter. It's about $400 per meter to do the renovation here, including all costs, all brokerage fees, all legal costs, pension tax, purchase tax, legal due diligence, legal fees, renovation, uh, rezoning. So renovation were like $350 a square meter for the actual renovation? $320, $30 per square meter. Okay. Yeah. And then all the extra yeah. taxes, government, lawyer fees, all et cetera. Yeah. Okay. And what's the size of this office? It's now 330 leasable square meters, plus another 60 square meters of terrace, which we've also uh, uh, received approval to uh, put a roof over and increase the saleable square meters by 30 square meters. So let's say we have 330 square meters here and we're all in for about $420,000. Okay. That's three top floors of a, 
10 year old building uh, penthouse. Okay, great. And how much rental are you getting on a monthly basis? So we're currently renting this for almost a 19% yield. So we're currently renting this for $6,600 per month. Actually, pre-COVID, it was a tiny bit more. We're currently giving um, not even a 10% discount during COVID times. Um, people are working from home, but there's also, and this is so incredibly important to say, there's such a shortage of office space here that even when people are working at home, they don't want to give up the office. When COVID ends, the rent will increase and discount that we've negotiated for them that they've negotiated of approximately 7%, that's uh, built into when the quarantine period ends and when COVID ends, the price goes back up to approximately $7,000 per month here. And how many people can fit in this office? 25 people can work in this office. Uh, that's not included, plus meeting rooms, plus bathroom, plus kitchen, plus common areas. So 25 people working in here, that's about $280 per month per employee which is actually very reasonable. Yeah, that's a very, yeah, that's a very reasonable number. Just as a matter of comparison, a few days ago we met with Cushman and Wakefield, so the big office uh, space broker. And here in Kiev right now, if you want to go to a shared office and you have a number of employees, it'll cost you in general between 400 and $450 per desk per month. Yep. So 280 is a, is a Almost half that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a favorable comparison. And it's still a 19% yield. And it's got a view. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Cool. All right, let's, let's actually go, go see this view. We've identified uh, a couple things that are drastically different in this market and drastically affect the rental price. I mean, one of the questions I think people are going to ask is how can you get $27, $30 per square meter? Uh, as opposed to $11 per square meter. Well, this is one of the biggest reasons. And light, we've identified as one of the most important considerations. Open space, we've identified as one of the most important things. A modern IT feeling renovation is the third most important thing. And being able to buy these properties with sufficient light, with an open space, with this type of renovation, makes a drastic difference on the amount that you can rent the property for. And this is one of the things that I think we're going to talk about uh, over time is why some places rent for certain prices and why other places rent for a, a drastically different price. There's such an incredible lack of supply for offices in general in Kiev, but offices that are appropriately renovated with open space, with light, with the feeling that you're not in Kiev anymore, you know you're in the West, those go for a drastic premium. Okay, cool. Can we go, go outside? Yeah, you bet. Oh, wow. Amazing view. This is the top floor of the building. This of a three floor, of the uh, three floor space. This is the very top of the building. We're now gonna go down to the uh, 22nd floor and then to the 21st floor. So this office space has three floors. That is correct, yeah. It's a three floor penthouse. Um, I mean, I'd like to get into a little more of the details. One of the most important things here is that we're buying actually residential space and it's legal in Kiev to have office and residential space uh, due to the lack of supply in the office market in Kiev. And so what we have here is the opportunity on exit on the sale to decide how we want to sell this space, this object. We've uh, rezoned this into two residential apartments, so we have the opportunity to sell it as a large residential apartment, two residential apartments as an office. So this gives us multiple exits and multiple opportunities to maximize our returns. Talk to us about the place you're most proud of here. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, there's clearly a space that I like the most. Let's uh, let's head out to the terrace. A little slippery. 
Do you need liability insurance as a landlord here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you can get it. <laughs> All right, wow. Wow. Amazing place to entertain, for barbecues, to have clients over. How big is this terrace? This terrace is 80 square meters. You know, one of the best things about buying a penthouse apartment is you get these rooftop terraces and you essentially are able to purchase them for free. And so this is 80 square meters of usable space with amazing views, amazing light. And almost, you know, you'll come back to this more and more in the Ukraine, in the Kiev market is what you can offer that no one else can offer. And this is something that no other office space can offer. Um, we install a barbecue outside. People can have corporate events out here. This is really lovely. What, what I'd like to know is one of the main issues people have with investing in a fund right. like yours is, you know, the fees. People have right. issues with the fees. So people see this, they're like, cool. Uh, John paid 850 per square meter, the total renovation costs, legal fees, etc. DD 400. I can do the same myself. Right. So what would you say to these people who think that, that they can come to Kiev and get a similar deal? Right. Well, first of all, it's impossible to get a similar deal. And I know it's easy for me to say, and I almost don't want to say it because I, I, I encourage people to come and try it on their own, but you're just simply not going to be able to. And what's the difference here? We bought for 850 a meter. How? Uh, one individual lent another individual money. He couldn't pay him back. In exchange for the loan, he gave him this apartment. As a result, there was a problem with the documents. There was no exchange of money, so and there was no documented loan. So we had to, not only did we have access to an exclusive deal, but we had to create the all and legalize all of the documents to purchase this purchase this object, which for even a local individual would be nearly impossible. So we got it for $850 a square meter. There's also several things we've done here that would be pr practically impossible even for a local person and absolutely impossible for, for a foreigner, let alone someone without the connections here. For example, this 80 square meter terrace. We have permission to subdivide this space into two residential apartments. We also have permission to enclose 40 square meters of outdoor space here on the terrace. Put a roof, put walls, and most importantly, include it officially in the documents. This increases the saleable size of this property by 40 square meters. At $2,000 a square meter, that's $80,000 of free money. Where did that $2,000 figure come from? Well, right now, under we've just done our actual year-end valuation. This property is valued at $2,400 per square meter. And uh, we're all in for $1,275 per square meter, including everything as we discussed. And it's valued right now for $2,400. So if, pe if people buy into the fund, at what price do they actually buy into this property? Okay, so this is, uh, we have an NAV calculated annually. Although we're up this amount, we don't place all of that value immediately into the NAV for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a fully EU fund with auditors and fund administrator and fund manager. Uh, this amount is, we've put, placed probably one third of the upside that we've realized as an increase in NAV. Our NAV is going up by 25% um, as of the end of the year. Uh, but the other uh, three quarters of the upside we're going to place in an NAV reserve. Um, this is to balance the increase of NAV over time to make it more fair. It's also, frankly, to encourage new investors. You're immediately realizing substantial upside on your investment. I think one of the things we want to ensure is that we have a steady increase in NAV that both rewards new investors uh, and rewards existing investors. So existing investor, the fund is closed for five years. Uh, so once you invest, uh, you're in for five years. What we want to ensure is that existing investors uh, also increase uh, their value over time at a steady rate, and new investors are incentivized to invest and to grow the fund, to have more diversity in the fund, new objects we can purchase and renovate to include in the fund, diversify the risk for existing investors, share costs with existing investors, and as a result, reward both new investors and existing investors. As much as I love Ukraine and I come here on a regular basis, bureaucracy here is a nightmare, especially when it comes to real estate. For some reason, it's a very touchy subject, and just trying to navigate bureaucracy here is uh, 
can be quite hellish. Actually, the worst part about the bureaucracy is that an investor will come here and they'll ask someone, they'll ask a broker, they'll ask a professional, they'll ask a lawyer, can I subdivide this apartment? And they'll say, absolutely, no problem. My friends have done it. <laughs> yeah, you can, but you won't be able to. And second of all, it'll take you years and it will waste your time and it will cost you more than you think. And the broker just wants to sell you the property. They're, so they're using an anecdote of someone with personal connections or, or the appropriate team or someone with experience that is able to do this with yourself that frankly doesn't have those connections and doesn't have that team and doesn't have that experience. So for, although they'll tell you it's possible, it, it really isn't. And um, perhaps that's a shame, but that's the reality. And uh, that's really where an experienced person in this market with the established team and trust and experience can add significant value to an investor. In terms of the current investment in this fund, what percentage has been invested by institutions mm -hmm. versus retail investors? Well, actually, we I would estimate that 97% is either institutional investors or fund managers of institutional funds. Uh, that includes emerging market funds, uh, frontier market funds, and also a uh, US real estate fund uh, that is investing now, diversifying their holdings and investing in emerging markets. We really only have one, um, perhaps two, uh, individual investors it's exclusively practically exclusively experienced emerging market frontier market fund manager professionals that have experience in these markets for 20 plus years i i think this is an interesting selling point when you have professional investors actually putting their money here so wait um so these funds are charging their customers fees and you're charging the fund fees that is correct yes and they still think it's a good deal well, they absolutely think it's yeah. a good deal. You know, okay. They understand that in these markets that uh, someone that, that our fees are a tiny per percent of what we can, the savings we can realize upon purchase, on renovation, on rezoning, on sale, on use, on design, on, on the rental yields. I mean, we're renting for 27 to $30 a meter when other places here are renting for 11, 12, $13 a meter. It's the differences that we know that have to be provided to realize that premium. And in a market where there's no lending and, and inexperienced um, property holders and a real lack of supply of professional property developers here, uh, when you can make this different and provide a unique product that's in demand, it creates a substantial premium. Okay, and the f but the fund is open to re retail investors. The fund is absolutely open to retail investors. We are a RAFE, a registered alternative investment fund, an EU fund. One important question that I often receive is, are you in U.S. investors able to invest? We do have a substantial number of U.S. investors, both professional and uh, in the first fund, uh, individual investors. Uh, we have no problem with providing the appropriate uh, tax forms for U.S. tax declaration on an annual basis. Okay. Great. All right, let's continue the tour. very much for the tour really appreciate it pleasure so do you have any other such projects in the in the pipeline yes absolutely uh, actually we are going to look after this uh, now we're going to look at another property uh, of the similar size we're concentrating on this 300 square meter 350 square meter office spaces in residential buildings um, we actually have two objects uh, that we've identified and are, have completed initial due diligence on and that we're interested in purchasing, both of which have uh, similar yields, 18 to 21 percent gross yields. 21 percent? Up to 21 percent gross yields, yes. 
Um, and these are identified and I mean we still have to go through legal due diligence and check all the documents but there's objects out there. Uh, they're not easy to find. It takes months. Usually uh, have several people looking for apartments for us uh, that have worked with, for us for years and they identify special situations and special properties that uh, are for sale. Usually very motivated sellers or a special situation. Like uh, this apartment was a special situation and as a result bought it substantially lower than market price. I know we had a discussion back in October. I had been following you for, for a while and in October I approached you. We did a, we did a video together and you laid out the, the business case for your, for your fund and I thought it was very interesting. Right. But now that I see it, I, I really understand it. Right. And the game, and correct me if I'm wrong, is essentially you're buying these properties really for cheap. Right. You're doing a quality renovation. Right. Great. Like you're ending, you end up paying $1,250 a square meter for a penthouse apartment in one of the best neighborhoods in Kiev with a terrace, crazy views. You're making ridiculously high rental yields. Right. But then ultimately the main goal is actually to flip the unit Absolutely. In, a, in a few years time. Because like the reality is I, I don't think you would want to be here on camera saying that you're going to be able to deliver yields of like 19, 20% for the next five years? Or, or is this a statement you would make? No, abs absolutely not. And actually, thank you very much for it. Because people concentrate on this 18% gross yield, for example. Um, I view this as a, a re-rating of cap rates, essentially. So right now, 18%, is it sustainable? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's, so okay. what <laughs> it's not. No. Like if there's any market with 18% yields for real assets, I mean, we're talking of a real asset, it's not some junk bonds, we're talking of like real physical assets in an emerging market, capital is going to come. Like it's invariably going to come. Absolutely. And yields are going to go down. Well, percentage, 18% is a function of two numbers. Your purchase price, including all of your costs, uh, and we don't buy at market, we don't renovate at market, all our legal due diligence and broker's fees are, are half what market is. So the purchase cost is substantially lower than the market. The renovation we do is targeted, is identified, is analyzed, is figured out ahead of time to maximize our, our rental values. The price we rent for is not for the market. So this is not market numbers. The 18% gross yield that we're achieving is not available to the general public at all. This 18% is not sustainable. What does this mean? It means, one, the 18% is going to fall, but it also means that the sales price is going to increase. We're buying substantially less than the market. I mean, we can sell this today for an effective 9%, 10% yield. So what does that mean? It means immediately we've doubled our money. We can sell this today for $2,400 per square meter. Why don't you? Why don't you just flip it because, uh, and do another project like this? I totally understand. Uh, because the major catalyst in this market, I feel, really is this return of mortgage lending. And right now, there's no mortgages. It's the middle of COVID. There's a lack of people buying. This is not the time to sell. I, I expect, okay, let's not speculate on where prices could go. I mean, we're still at $2,000 per square meter. We're still probably down 70, 75% from the height. This property eh, peaked at $8,000 per square meter. Right now it's $2,400 per square meter. I would expect this property to sell for $4,500 per square meter, but I mean, let's not speculate. Let's have the return of mortgage lending, let's have a purchasing increase simply because of lending, and then we will sell and realize their profits. Uh, again, the 18% yield is amazing, but it's a temporary thing that we are utilizing for the time to pass, for mortgage lending to return, and for us to exit. What I like about this is that the downside risk is actually quite limited. When right. you're paying such low prices for prime property in a, in a major capital city, you know, it's what like, can happen? Yeah, it's like it can't go down that much. More Twelve. Really. Well, even if it goes down, yeah. what if the price goes down twenty percent? Well, yeah. we're getting twenty percent almost annually in rent. Yeah. So after one year, we break even if the price goes down twenty percent. What, what market? And I think this is the the key. What market do you have the opportunity of a double or a triple or a quadruple with no downside risk practically?
So John, what is the biggest risk? Okay, so the biggest risk in this market by far is uh, the market's thin, especially with no lending. There's very few buyers. Exiting and it, what we call liquidity is, is the biggest factor here. One thing that investors are gonna complain most about, and that is we're gonna sell and they're gonna think it's too early. Uh, it's very important in this market to, to exit. Uh, in a timely manner. So we are looking for the return of mortgage lending and we are looking to sell, we're looking to realize our profits and to exit the market. Great, so John, thank you. Like I said, I've been following John for quite a while now. He has a great newsletter with mm. information on the real estate market with regular updates in terms of Ukraine in general and Kiev in particular. So I really encourage you to subscribe to it. It's completely free, there's the, there's the link below. And John, how can people get in touch with you directly if they want to? Oh, probably easiest is to email me on js at krer.eu. We have our website, www.krer.eu. Uh, it has photos of the properties, which, are, which is very good. Um, some information on the website is locked behind a, a firewall uh, due to uh, EU regulations. If you contact me, however, and we have a short conversation, it's no problem to send you all information on the fund. I encourage you to do so. Uh, there's a lot more meat behind this story and um, I can explain how exactly it is we're adding value and how we're able to identify these opportunities in this market. Cool. So I'm in Kiev for 10 days and I'll be doing more videos on the Kiev real estate market here. So make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to, to get more insights. And as always, make sure to subscribe to my private list on thewanderinginvestor.com. It's entirely free and this way you don't miss out on any of the updates. John, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ladislas.